Welcome to the Quick Train Modeler video training series. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the new capabilities and enhancements in version 7.1.5. With version 7.1.5, Quick Train Modeler now provides universal coordinate system support. This is particularly valuable to users who work with LiDAR data that's stored in a state plane coordinate system. Let's take a look and see how this works. I'm going to start off by clicking on the Import Models button. In the Import Model dialog, I'm just going to load in an LAS tile here. I'm selecting a tile from a recent Boston LiDAR collect. Scrolling down in the Info window here, you'll notice that the geo-registration information is a Massachusetts State Plane Coordinate System NAD 83 feet. Even though this data set is in a state plane coordinate system, when I check the box showing Google Earth, the footprint will appear in the correct location. If your LiDAR data are missing geo-registration information, or if the coordinate system has been defined incorrectly, 7.1.5 now gives you the capability to edit that information. Simply click on the Edit button beneath Geo-Registration. This will launch the Define Geo-Registration dialog where you can make any adjustments. Universal Coordinate System Support has also been added to the Coordinate Converter utility, which is still accessed by going to the File menu. In this example, you'll notice that Massachusetts State Plane coordinates are being converted to both MGRS and Geodetic coordinate systems. You're also given the option to specify a custom coordinate system by clicking on the Edit button. Previous versions have offered LiDAR point cloud filtering capabilities, but in 7.1.5 the point cloud filtering capabilities move to real time. From the Analysis menu, go to Filtering and go to QTA Continuous Filtering. First, select your model, then select the QTA attribute. For this example, I'm going to first go with Number Returns. Click the button to pack the attribute into the filter channel and then you can adjust the slider bars to apply the filtering. In previous versions of Quick Terrain Modeler, if you wanted to load in 2D data, such as imagery, you already had to have your terrain data displayed in the viewer. That's no longer the case in 7.1.5. You can go to Import Texture, select an image or a set of images, and load them into Quick Terrain Modeler. You'll find that panning and zooming with 2D data are extraordinarily fast, faster than just about any other GIS or image processing software package out there. 2D support has also been added to the model search functionality. Within the Model Search tool, simply click on the radio button for Image Search 2D Data. To do a search for UTM coordinates, I'm going to uncheck the unregistered search box and select the appropriate UTM zone. I'm going to enter my UTM coordinates and choose the search radius. When I'm ready to search, I just click on the Find Images button. Once an image has been located, I simply click on the file name and click Load Images. In the latest version, lines, routes, and even selection areas will now hug the terrain. There is now an option to make the minimap floating, allowing you to position it anywhere on your desktop. To do this, simply click on the Float Minimap Window button. For tactical users, it's now easier to configure Quick Train Modeler to give you one-click access to most of your analytical tools. From the File menu, go to Options and Settings, 
and choose Configure Toolbar. Simply click the button for Tactical Defaults and go to Apply. It's now easier to get your vector data, such as routes and markers, into Falcon View. Simply right-click in a layer tree, go to Export, and choose Export to SHP for Shapefile and use the Geodetic option. This will convert your data to a geodetic coordinate system, allowing Falcon View to import it without issue. 7.1.5 makes it easy to exchange information with your Garmin GPS device. To export an image of your screen to your GPS device, first make sure you're in 2D mode. Either click on the Export to GPS button, or under the Export menu, choose Render Screen to Garmin. There's also additional flexibility when it comes to exporting either routes or waypoints. Under the Markers menu, go to Export Mission to GPX. After clicking the Save button, the GPS export window launches, giving you additional control over what waypoints, routes, and tracks are exported. Finally, it's worth mentioning that you now have the option to drag and drop the Garmin current track into Quick Train Modeler to see where you have been in the context of the 3D terrain and imagery. We hope the 7.1.5 release makes it easier to work with your LiDAR and other geospatial data. Thanks for watching this video, and don't forget to check out the Applied Imagery website, where we're posting additional video tutorials on a regular basis.